is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 volvo xc40 courtesy of younger volvo in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i'm in this one today because this is quite a good looking small suv mainly built in sweden with a little bit in belgium as well the final assembly is actually done in belgium Belgium, but first introduced back in 2019 with some minor changes for this particular 2022 model year and so in this video I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels that do come with the 2022 xc40 first one being the momentum starting at thirty five thousand one hundred ninety five dollars inscription for forty thousand nine hundred and forty five dollars and lastly the r design starting at forty thousand four hundred and forty five dollars but that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive simply add two thousand dollars then to any of those prices but so that when it comes to the power plant of the xc40 i do want to mention Dependent upon if you go with the front wheel drive or the all wheel drive, it's going to be two different configurations, two different power numbers. So, for the front wheel drive configuration, you get a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, 187 horsepower, 221 pound feet of torque, of course, sent to the front wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time for that front wheel drive configuration. 8.1 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 23 in the city 32 on the highway but so then on the other side of things if you were to opt for the all-wheel drive version like we have today you still get the two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder but this time cranking out 248 horsepower 258 pound feet of torque sent to all four wheels of course yet again through an eight speed automatic transmission zero to 60 time coming in at 6.1 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 30 on the highway and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our xc40 i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes which are all located within the infotainment screen front and center they will include comfort eco off-road dynamic and individual adjusting quite a bit of different aspects to the xc40 including shift points throttle response steering sensitivity climate control settings all-wheel drive system engagement and braking characteristics as well that's quite a bit and substantially more than other manufacturers that typically just do those first three so having got all of that out of the way now what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put this acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2022 xc40 here up to speed all right you guys so we are in dynamic driving mode the more fun one of course here we go ah! <laughs> yeah buddy Oh my gosh, quite surprising, <laughs> honestly. I didn't expect that, this is a small SUV. It's not supposed to have that kind of power, but dang, you guys, that was fun, man. I like it, definitely go with the all-wheel drive version for that alone, my goodness, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.9 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it's gonna come in at a very respectable 120 feet. As far as the braking feel goes, eh, it's okay. I feel like Volvo in general has this distinct braking feel that's unlike any other manufacturer that I typically test out. It's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing it's, it's just kind of in the middle it's just so so and honestly that braking number though that's completely fine so you're definitely not going to have any issues there then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine actually we are riding on some extremely smooth roads in hagerstown right now but i will say having said that the ride quality is still completely fine so no issues there then touching on steering feel it's okay i still have it in dynamic and i really like it in dynamic you can tell it has a heavier weight to it instantly points you in the direction that you want to go my favorite part though about the steering feel about being in control here is the thick grips this has substantially thicker grips than the volvo s60 that i just got done driving and i like it i like the thicker grips in the xc40 like i said to you guys it gives you that better feeling of being in control that's all as far as cabin noise goes it's been perfectly fine i'm going 50 miles per hour right now there isn't a whole lot of wind noise at all coming into the cabin even with this panoramic this dual pane panoramic moonroof that we have still that is laminated so there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise whatsoever coming into the cabin so i love that as far 
far as visibility goes, it's excellent, especially with the shape of the XC40. You're not gonna have any issues, but it really is quite excellent. So no issues with that whatsoever. And rain sensing windshield wipers also come standard on every single trim level across the board. So you gotta love that as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Volvo XC40. All right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Volvo XC40 finished in onyx black metallic. And actually, if you get close enough, and let me go ahead and get close enough real quick, you guys will see there's actually like a nice little sparkle or a flake to this paint. It looks so dang cool. Hope this is coming out on camera. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. LED headlights with LED Thor's hammer daytime running lights coming standard for all trim levels across the board. Kind of Volvo's signature look with the Thor's hammer LED daytime running lights. I love that. Automatic feature, of course, coming standard across the board as well. And automatic high beams coming standard across the board. You don't always get that coming standard, so you gotta love that. Essentially what that is, it's when you got your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim your high beams back to low beams till the vehicle is gone and then it's gonna put it automatically back up to high beams for you. So it's pretty darn convenient. Aluminum accents on the lower portion of the front bumper unless you go with this awesome R design trim level that we have today and then you're gonna get gloss black accents as expected. When it comes to the front grille, it's really the easiest way to determine which trim level that you're looking at when you're actually on a Volvo lot. For example, the black front grille with chrome surrounds is gonna be the momentum. Black front grille with vertical slats and chrome surrounds is gonna be the inscription. And the completely blacked out with gloss black surround front grille is going to be the R design, of course, that we have today. But LED front fog lights with the cornering function also coming on the inscription and R design. So cornering function, meaning when you're going around the bend at night, they are going to swivel slightly dependent upon the direction of your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend. So very nice looking front end, all in all, very signature Volvo, but it pretty much rounds out the front. Let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the XC40, silver roof rails coming with the momentum and inscription, black roof rails with the R design trim that we have today, of course, rear privacy glass coming standard for all trim levels, black window surrounds for the momentum and R design. Otherwise, you're going to actually get chrome belt line molding if you were to go with that inscription trim level. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for momentum and inscription, gloss black side mirrors, mirrors then for the R design and then heated with LED integrated turn signals for every single trim level across the board so you gotta love that taking a look down at the wheel configuration they will of course differ amongst the trim levels yet again 18 inch five spoke silver alloys for the momentum 18 inch six spoke black diamond cut alloys that sounds fancy of course coming with the inscription and then 19 inch double five spoke alloys with the silver slash matte black finish so that is of course what we have today coming with the r design trim level but pretty much rounds out the side profile of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around back, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. Of course, you got the Volvo lettering spelled out horizontally. And if I were to go up underneath of the XC40 here, you will find dual exhaust outlets, both tucked away, of course. But having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, you guys, and so nails since we are around back here of the XC40, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, there is a button on the key fob. There is, of course, a button on the tailgate itself, any button by the driver's left knee as well. And by the way, there is a power tailgate available that costs an additional $200, which in my personal opinion would be well worth it for this thing. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 20.7 cubic feet behind that second row. But with that row folded down, it will come in at 57.5 cubic feet, which isn't that bad. And by the way, it is a 60-40 split, in case you were curious. When it comes to in that cargo area itself, there are two cargo lights, which you don't always get, usually you just get one. There is a 12 volt power outlet back there. There is a cargo cover back there as well. And there are two grocery bag hooks located on both sides of the cargo area, but it gets better because 
if you kind of fold up that rear cargo floor, there's actually two more grocery bag hooks illustrated by the picture that it's giving me that's telling me that they are grocery bag hooks. So that was pretty cool. I've never seen it done this way before. And it basically just locks in place and it gives you a little bit extra cargo capacity for perhaps some groceries. So I thought that was pretty darn cool. And of course there is a spare tire under that cargo floor in the end, but anyways, Making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 36.1 inches. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that second row there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard 12 volt power outlet back there as well. There are two phone charging ports, not USB, but phone charging ports back there as well. And just above all of those charging ports, there is rear ventilation that comes standard on this thing as well, which you don't always get in this size of a small SUV. So I do like that Volvo included it on the XC40. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Power driver seat with power lumbar, of course, coming standard. You will get memory settings for up to two different drivers coming standard as well. That is going to be found just underneath of that nice shiny Harman Kardon metal speaker there, which we'll get to in a little bit here, but leather seating coming with the momentum and inscription, however, my favorite seating in the world is always going to be a suede leather combination like I have in my own car. And that's what you get here in the XC40. And that's what you get with the R design. It's actually a Napa leather suede combination, which is even better. So absolutely wonderful seats as far as the material goes. So big fan of that. Heated front seats also coming standard on all trim levels across the board. And perhaps my favorite part is the little flag of Sweden found on the passenger side seat here. It's just a little attention to detail that you gotta do. That Volvo definitely has accomplished there with that little flag. I think that's so stinking cool. But anyways, seats were pretty comfortable. Not my very most favorite out there, but they'll definitely do the job. They'll get it done. Let's take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for all trim levels across the board. And like I said previously, these 10 and two grips are definitely leaning towards the thicker side of things, which I personally prefer and make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here we do have an orange key because this is key number two apparently when you buy a Volvo key number one is going to be black and key number two is going to be orange I like the orange you never get that and you guys know I like vibrant colors but anyways it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button. And so upon startup, speedometer is all the way to your left with a small digital speedometer within that. Tachometer is found all the way to your right and it does adjust slightly. The gauges do adjust slightly depending upon which drive mode that you put it in. Eco changes it up substantially, but then the others pretty much look the same. So wouldn't have minded if Volvo added a little more customization between the driving modes or kind of like Mercedes Benz does it, I guess you could say. It of course will also give you your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Also speed limit of any given road found just underneath of that digital speedometer, which is pretty nice. So definitely a very high end, very nice looking digital gauge cluster for the XC40 without a doubt. Then making our way to overall interior quality, there is a panoramic moonroof coming with the inscription and R design, charcoal headliner coming with the R design. And I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was just going to be a basic black. And I guess I kind of is black, of course, but there's a nice texturized finish to this headliner. I really like it. It's not a suede headliner, but it's almost just as good because of the texturized finish. So I'm a huge fan of that headliner. Universal garage door opener for up to three different garage doors coming standard, of course, with a frameless rear view mirror. You gotta love that. Wireless phone charger coming with the inscription and R design found just in front of the shifter. There is a crystal gear selector found on the inscription trim level only developed by a Swedish glass design company. So of course, everything's from Sweden in the XC40. So I absolutely love that feature. Wouldn't have minded if they added that to the R design that we have today actually, but gloss black center console trim coming with the inscription and R design. I'm a big fan of that because the alternative is the black plastic. So this gloss black finish, I am a huge fan of. So thank you, Volvo. You really should put that on all trim levels though. Aluminum foot pedals coming with the R design, which I'm definitely a big fan of. And I like this little, uh, I don't know, the little square design found just above the passenger side glove box and also on the doors. I think that's a nice added touch. I mean, they could have put anything there, but this works. I definitely like that. Just in front of the shifter, by the way, you do have a little bit of storage to the left and the right of that wireless phone charger. You have a 12 volt power outlet, dual USB charging ports. Behind the shifter, there's an electromechanical parking brake. You have dual cup holders. There is a smidge bit of storage just behind those cup holders. And of course, you got plenty of space within the center armrest then 
as well. So definitely no issues there. A lot of soft touch material as well. Like I said to you guys earlier, also have metal speaker covers. That is extremely high end. And we'll test out the sound system in a second here. And overall, there's like maybe seven buttons found underneath the infotainment screen. So it's a very simplistic look, which I personally prefer. But anyways, let's go ahead and get to that infotainment screen. Nine inch color touchscreen display coming standard for every single trim level, believe it or not. Gotta love that. Bluetooth audio streaming coming standard, of course. Android Auto, Apple Car. CarPlay, meaning if you have a smartphone, you can simply hook it up via USB connection and you have free navigation displayed up on that nine inch screen as well. Radio information can of course check out up there. You have your climate control settings in the bottom left and right hand corner there, as well as your heated seat buttons on the bottom as well. But let's get back to those radio settings because when it comes to the speakers, they of course will differ. Eight speakers with 250 watts coming standard, but there is an optional 13 speaker Harman Kardon sound system that goes for $800. Well worth it in my opinion because you get 13 speakers plus 600 watts. So having said that, let's see if it is worth it. I don't know how I can say that without testing it out first, but let's go ahead and turn to the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. The bass, the bass, the bass. The bass was crazy in that Harman Kardon sound system. Clarity was good as well, but the bass, that was perfect. And really, there's speakers everywhere. There's a speaker just above the infotainment screen right now, and all of the speakers are metal. They're high quality. You gotta love it. Not all the speakers, but most of them. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is, of course, when you do put the XC40 in reverse, you will find a very high quality rear view camera that does come standard across the board. And there is a 360 degree camera with the advanced package, which goes for $1,450. That's going to give you that bird's eye view of everything all around you, which is pretty darn cool. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying this is a Volvo. So therefore, it is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all right there. Front side side current airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to have a latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. I'm getting tired of saying that in every video, but the fun stuff, the advanced safety that you gotta love is blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert coming standard, rear parking sensor standard, power retractable door and mirrors, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, roadside recognition, all that standard. Then if you were to go with the inscription or our design, that is going to add front and rear parking sensors as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the XC40, Volvo has always been known for safety and that has not changed throughout the years as evidenced by that top safety pick plus rating. Flag of Sweden on the seats, one of my favorite features in this thing. You gotta love that and the seats themselves I love the suede Napa leather combinations. That's just about as high end as you can get when it comes to seating. Great styling, both on the exterior and interior. The digital gauges are 100% on point. I love digital gauges in cars. The only thing I would add, just like I said with the S60, Volvo, I think it's time you add some really cool, really fun multicolor ambient lighting to this thing, and then it would be perfect. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the XC40 in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video, stay gold.